Polka dot, you know I like it. Let's go over it. Hi everyone, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you have liked it and also subscribe and hit that bell button, right? If you are a polka dot holder, let me know. It'd be nice to see you in the comments below. I hope I do this one justice because it is one of my holds, but also, 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 I have left out some glaringly obvious things. This is just a surface scratch, okay? So it's not full balls deep because I'll be here for an hour. You don't want that. So I'm hoping to keep it quite short, concise information that you can use. It may well be a long video though, because it is polka dot. I don't think people understand fully what it is. So I want to try and explain the whole element of it. I don't want people to buy it really high when they were like, oh, but I wish I knew that then. I'm giving you the tools now, right? So let's go. So here we are, Polkadot, new logo. I do not know if you like it or not. I personally like it. I voted for this one, which was pretty cool. So in terms of simplicity, let's just go for it, right? If it's going to work, there we go. As always, a little disclaimer. This is not sponsored. I wish it was. Um, everything you see in this video is from their approved websites, obviously. And most important, make sure you do your own research. As I've stated before, I've missed a few things out kind of obvious things so just make sure you understand that and again not financial advice but i am an investor so i may be a little bit biased hmm. now what is it it's decentralized web 3.0 blockchain and interoperability basically simple terms of that now it is an open source sharding multi-chain protocol remember that word multi-chain it also connects and secures a network of specialized blockchains facilitating cross chain important word and the transfer of any data or assets hugely important words there not just tokens thereby allowing blockchains that is underlined for a reason to interoperable with each other basically communication right it's key but we're not talking about little tokens here, we're talking about blockchains, which is hugely important, and we will come on to that in a minute. Polkadot was designed to provide a foundation of the decentralized internet of blockchains known as Web3. You've probably heard of that term, Web3. Now, let's talk a little bit about the token before we go anywhere else, because I think it's important to know. The Polkadot token, DOT, right? That is a ticker. It is known as a layer zero meta protocol because it underlies and describes a format of a network of layer one blockchains known as parachains that is something that you probably need to take a picture of and then go and think to yourself oh my god that is pretty cool in simple terms it is going to be a shared protocol to allow security and governance and the utilization of the you know that that framework to enable multiple blockchains to be built on top of it. What I mean by this is a layer one blockchain is the likes of Solana, is the likes of Avalanche, Ethereum. There's loads of them, right? But they've got one limitation. It's simple. They can only build on themselves, right? Whereas Polkadot, you can have multiple, multiple multi-chain blockchains as individual sovereignty on a chain which is important, right? Which will enable one layer one, two layer one, three layer one, four, all the way around the whole ecosystem. And each one of those will have dApps on it. And we'll come onto that in more detail on how it works. Now, that is one element of why the token will have a big amount of structure because of the one thing on there, which we will come onto. But the first thing we need to talk about is governance. It has a committee, 28 days, I believe, I think it is anyways, of a voting structure where it goes through the voting mechanism through a committee it's fully decentralized it goes through so many different levels and that is how things will change upgrade little protocol tweaks and that and we'll come on to that in a bit but that is an important thing for the token the next thing is staking i've kind of glanced over this but you can get roughly 15 percent at the moment on the network on the protocol and it is great it is a great little system and it does work very very well 28 day bonding period, which is kind of a bit good and bad for network security. However, it is passive income. If you've got a bag that you want to keep onto the chain, just stake it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Anyways, the last one is bonding, new parachains, bonding tokens. 
outdate and non-useful power chains will be removed from the bonded token. This is a simple proof of stake. So there's all kinds of mechanisms within the power chains to enable a currency, a treasury. And there's some things that I've obviously missed off on this presentation because it will send you down rabbit holes. Anyways, moving on to the next bit. Why I'm excited? Well, this is the element. True interoperability. Polkadot enables cross blockchain transfers of any data and asset, not just tokens. I mentioned that before. It connects everything, everything. So you can connect it to Ethereum, the Ethereum virtual machine, the language of Ethereum, other, you know, blockchain essentially, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain. You know, you could probably go on to the likes of Atom, loads, even Kasama, Bitcoin, etc., etc. There's loads, right? So you can be able to utilize and move and not have to worry about it. You've got an easy blockchain innovation. This is the, the substrate framework. This is something that I've not really covered much on it. However, it enables you to connect your blockchain and build it. It's a framework, it's a skeleton, and you can build it. You can set your parameters for your blockchain and they give you the tools for that to enable that to do it. You do not need a parachain to have a substrate. You can be a substrate and you can utilize another network if you so wish to. Pretty cool, right? Another one is security. The security mechanism of the layer zero, it enables everything to be kind of bonded together. The one big flaw of Ethereum is you see all these DeFi protocols and stuff and they get rug pulled because they're not really, they're not the greatest in terms of security elements where this, it's totally different. It's a, it's a layer on its own on the full ecosystem where they can all share it, which is important, right? And the last one, and I think personally, if you've been in this space for a long, long time, probably the best. Forkless and future-proof upgrading, right? What does this mean? In the olden days, whenever we had an upgrade, say, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum, it would divide the community. Oh, I don't want that protocol. I want this one. You get so many people on one side, so many people on the other. You start throwing peas at each other. It gets a bit messy, right? Split of the network, right? It's a fork. Happened loads of times before. We've seen it with Bitcoin Cash. We've seen it with Ethereum. We've seen loads of these all the time, right? It happens a lot. This will enable everything not to be in that sort of situation where it will upgrade. It won't be new forever, like everything, but it can be upgraded. Whereas the likes of Ethereum, if no one agrees on it, you can't do it, which is a problem, right? Which is why there's problems already. You can see that with Ethereum with the fees. Therefore, it's taken time. Where with this, roll out an update, it goes through committee, crusty, easy. Moving on to the next bit, which we need to talk about technology, right? I don't want to go too deep on this because it does get a little bit, you know, mental. But realistically, it is any data on all that kind of stuff like that for the network protocol that allows things to kind of work, right? It's simple. You got a relay chain, the heart of it, essentially the layer zero. Responsibility for the network, shared and security, consensus and cross-chain technology. Parachains, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. This is those individual tokens, those individual projects that are running on the entire thing. Sovereign blockchains that can have their own to tokens and optimize for functionality for specific use cases. So NFT platforms, DeFi platforms, smart contract platforms, you, you get the picture, right? Parafreds, this is kind of like a half and half kind of job where it's similar, but it's a pay-as-you-go model where they're kind of like, they want to utilize certain things, but not all the things, if that makes sense. So that kind of works as a utility. So the likes of Chainlink is a good example of that, where it's kind of, it's its own blockchain. It doesn't need a power chain, but it will work within the ecosystem. Bridges, kind of obvious, you know about those. Connectivity to the likes of the Ethereum virtual machine, Bitcoin, and obviously Kusama and others out there too. Then you got the passive side where you got the nominators, the validators in terms of the utility of the network and how it works, staking, crowd loans, security, validation, transactions, etc., uh, collators and fishermen. There's absolutely loads of information here. This is why I suggest go and do a bit more research because I'm only scratching the surface. Now, building, as I've kind of glanced on it before, this is kind of an element of what has already been built on it. It's it's kind of outdated. It's on the website, but obviously you've got power chains that will be specific for these as well. So, for example, smart contract chains, Moonbeam, as an example. You've got data creation, you've got Oracle chains, you've got identity chains, financial chains, internet things, uh, zero knowledge, you've got file storage, and obviously bridges to Ethereum. But you've obviously got the likes of DeFi, NFTs, you've got an absolute mixed bag of everything, really. And they're already been built. 
and they're being built right now. They're obviously, some of them have gone through massive crowd loans, which we will come on to in a minute. There's loads of them. And this is where you start scratching the surface and thinking, wow, there's layer one blockchain is going to be doing this on a layer zero, which is Polkadot. And each one of these individual blockchains will have a load of apps to support this. It's like, oh, 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 wow. Pretty interesting, right? The team. We need to talk about the team because, yeah, it's probably got one of the best key figures, in, probably the best, in my opinion, who actually shows himself realistically, in my opinion. Now, Polkadot is a flagship protocol for Web3 Foundation, or it's basically a Swiss foundation with a mission to facilitate an open source, fully functional and user friendly decentralized web. It's kind of the start of it, really. And you've got the founders here, Dr. Gavin Ward, Robert Habermeer. I probably butchered that name and Robert Kazan. Now, when you start looking at this and I want to mainly focus on, you know, Gavin Wood. He was the co-founder of Ethereum. He built the smart contract language for Ethereum Solidarity. Which is mental when you think about it. He built that language. What works now? And if you watch the videos of him speaking, he was a part of Ethereum in 2014, right? He wanted Ethereum 2.0 to be started to be worked on in you know 2016 to be rolled out not too long after. We're not even at the stage of Ethereum 2.0 now, and it's 2022 almost, which is absolutely boggling when you think about it. So when you think about him forward thinking, why there's a lot of things in poker that is no longer or wouldn't be in Ethereum essentially, and even now, is is unbelievable. So the team is an important thing, and he is probably one of the main ones for like the Web 3.0 why it's around and why it works so well. Now. We're going to go into a bit more deeper stuff in terms of parachains because I think this is where essentially the money will be coming in. It already is. And also new projects for people to get excited about. And they are not just crappy projects. They are layer one projects, so like huge blockchains. And there will probably be quite a few blue chips, you know, I believe anyways, in terms of going forward. So a parachain is an advanced next generation layer one blockchain that transcends at the limitation of legacy networks specializing and interconnected parachains will, well, essentially make up diverse ecosystem of independent platforms, community, and ecosystems. Wow. Already you think, what are they building here? Basically, you've got to think what Ethereum is on this chain, essentially. That is what you've got to think of it as. And that's where it gets importantly, in, you know, you've got to start comparing good projects now and what they've been built on here, but with essentially a different technology that kind of, connects with everything not just themselves it starts going over your head when you think about it but in terms of what essentially a parachain while other blockchain protocols only allow developers to build dApps using smart contracts polkadot gives full control of the underlying blockchain itself that's important so if you think about this in simple terms you want to build on ethereum you can only use ethereum right makes sense so look at the likes of utrust look at the likes of at Chainlink, right? They are the, on the Ethereum blockchain. You can only utilize the, the protocols on there. The thing with Polkadot is you can share the the elements around it for the security and the governance, but you can make your blockchain whatever the hell you want. If you wanted to sing a song, you can sing a song. Basically, you get the picture. So that functionality makes it absolutely unbelievable. And guess what? They're layer one blockchains that can do whatever they want. Guess what? Gets built underneath them dApps, other projects, layer twos, other bits and pieces that are pretty, you know, normal. They will become a project underneath them as well. It's like, what? It's like, eh? Here, yeah, the possibilities endless, realistically, when you think about it. They are building literally layer ones on top of it. And then them layer ones will have so many different things, which I will come on to in a second. So you got as well, independent token economies. Basically, a full ecosystem, as I said, they can do whatever they want. They can build it in however they want, whatever fashion. you got bridge parachains to allow the connectivity between, obviously, Kasama, Bitcoin, Ethereum, most likely Avalanche, Atom, etc. in the future. And then you got smart contract ones, essentially the likes of Moonbeam, enabling you to connect to the Ethereum network, which is already huge in itself. It's huge. But as I said here on this bottom bit, imagine this. Every layer one blockchain at the moment, on average, is about 600 dApps running within it, right? Running 600. It's quite a lot, right? Now, Polkadot will not just have the dApps for like, you know, one. It'll have up to 100 parachains, 100. 
So you can imagine potentially 100 layer one blockchains running on one essential chain, the relay, and each one of them could have 100 to 1,000 dApps running through it. That's a lot of transactions. That's a lot of things going through a sharding multi-chain, and it is basically one whole ecosystem for everything. It's huge, and that is why it's a layer zero, not a layer one, which is why a lot of people get confused by it, I think. I think people think that Polkadot is a layer one, and things are building on it. It's the other way around. It's a layer zero, then there's a layer one, and then whatever the hell them layer ones want to build. It's important to know that. Moving on to the next bit, and we need to talk about how to get involved in these power chains and the auctions, more to the point. Now, these are essentially, in simple terms, a crowd of people loaning money, right? So you've got power chains connected to the Polkadot for open leasing slots for the relay chain via an auction, which basically involves locking up your dot. Now, it's not too scary. It's actually quite safe. Dot holders can help their favorite power chains win an auction. I've done it a lot of times, right? You can go onto my Patreon. You can see what I've invested in. You can also get this PowerPoint as well, if you so wish to do this as a PDF, if you want to go through it again. But at the same time, though, I will be open and transparent in terms of what I'm doing with, because there's a way of making money here, and I want to explain it. Now, you get your polka dot, you send it off to, say, Akala. Cool. They will look after it for you. They don't actually physically touch it. And it is then returned over time, right? The tokens. So with Akala, for example, it's a 20% vesting period initial release. And then it's an 80% linear over 96 weeks. So you get basically passive income just drip fed into distribution of tokens. And guess what happens at the end of it? You get your polka dot back. <laughs> so it's great. So essentially you're getting free Akala tokens over time. It's used for development. It's used for all kinds of good stuff. And it works incredibly, incredibly well. So I've already participated in three. I'm looking to do the same with Kusama, and it's a 96-week investing period. So essentially, you've got 96 weeks from start to finish, essentially, for, well, roughly by the time it does it, and then you get your tokens back. So if you so wish to, guess what you can do? You can sell your initial investment, pull it out, put it into DOT, put it elsewhere, go into more crowd loans, repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm going to do a full presentation on this on my Patreon at some point. Now, let's talk about the last bit that I do want to go over is essentially obviously exchanges of wallets it's all over the place the wallets fearless wallet and you've got ledger and trezor and you've obviously got other things which i will go onto the screen and go over in terms of parachain information and the dot market caps of the ecosystem there's some things i've obviously missed right in terms of treasury uh, treasury fund is huge there's also supply burns there's all kinds of stuff on there as well certainly when you start thinking how it kind of works so basically every single you know, percentage from staking rewards goes into the treasury, parachain transaction into the treasury, all kinds of bits and pieces into the treasury. And there's a, there's a there's circulation burn on there as well. It depends on how much, obviously. Now, let's go on to the websites and we'll go over some of the ecosystems to show you. I'm not going to do price analysis on this one. I'm going to go over how to find the projects, upcoming parachain launches and stuff like that so you get the picture. So the first one here is .marketcap.com. It's a real simple website to use. Now, already we've got some runnings going on. Affinity is currently winning. That will run in, well, a couple of days. It finishes at the end of this uh, mid-week, essentially. And yeah, you can see here now, in terms of how much money has been locked up, I want to give you an idea here of the wealth involved in this, right? It's ridiculous. And as I said before, these are basically layer one blockchains, likes of Akala, likes of Moonbeam and stuff like that. Parallel, the, the ridiculous, right? If this website will load for me, which it's, yeah, we go. So in terms of the first, this is already on batch number two. These have only just gone live a couple of days ago. We're already up nearly $500 million in already, right? Go to the batch one. It was $3.1 billion locked up into all of these. Mad. So you can see here, the likes of Moonbeam and Akala ran away with it. Basically a billion each nearly in, in those. It was absolutely ridiculous. And how does it work is, the more is raised, the less you get, right? So you see here, this is what the estimated reward is for Akala, for Glimmer, um, Astra, and you got Parallel and Clover. They're all there, they tell you roughly, that is per dot, per dot. So one dot you put in, you get that many tokens, roughly, right? Give or take. So that's kind of how it works. How to get involved in it is actually really simple. 
And it's probably a bit too simple in all fairness, right? So basically, obviously, you go and do your research, right? So let's say, for example, Affinity, which is one I've actually jumped into because I quite like this project. And it's also built by Engine. And essentially, you'll have all kinds of information here on how to do it. And it will tell you very, very specifically how to do it, how to get involved. And I think it's on the other one, parachains.info. It will just literally tell you how to do it. But if you go to connect your wallet, it will basically send you to the contribution page and you just bung it in. It is a whole bit of a minefield getting your wallet set up, which is why I recommend Fearless Wallet to do it, because it's re relatively simple. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. Now, one thing I have glanced over, go to projects and all on this, because this is where you find out what's a substrate, what's a paraphrase, what's a relay chain, what's a parachain, essentially. And this is where it gets important. So if you go and hear relay chain, right, they're the main ones. Bulk it up. Kusama, right? They're the heart of it, the main thing. On the relay chain, you have parathreads, but mainly you have parachains, right? So this is what they are. These are the winners already. So we've already got 25. These are on both ecosystems, Kasama and Polkadot, and you can go through them. Now, there's other things on there as well that may not be a parachain, but they will be substrate based. There you go, the 67 substrate based. Now I know Origin Trail, that will be becoming a parachain. I believe they're going for one. And there's other ones on here that you probably never even heard of or looked at before, but they are just running off the substrate framework, what they've built. So there's loads to comprehend, but make sure you do your research. Do not fall for the trap of things put on parachain or polka dot or KSM start or whatever, right? Because you need to validate it is on this website if it's on this website it's usually okay the one thing as well look at the likes of the, the moon river ecosystem right this will obviously improve as well so moon river if you don't know this is the moonbeam kind of sister chain the wild side of it essentially which is on kusama you can see already their ecosystem is growing these are like layer two solutions decks all kinds of stuff this is what i was explaining this is a layer one blockchain on kusama it's growing network effect You'll see this from Moonbeam when that is released on Polkadot. And yeah, you can see here, even here, Akala ecosystem, there's zero in at the minute. Karura, that's the, the Kusama version. You get the picture, right? Moving on to the next website is parachains.info. This is a little bit neater, but I prefer the other one. Um, this one's better for news and events and stuff, whereas, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to you. But if you go to the auctions, it's relatively straightforward. You can see it here. And as I said before, if you go to like join now, It'll give you the information. So get into the extension, how to do it, what your contributions are. Yeah, yeah. It's absolute doddle in terms of doing it. It's really, really straightforward. So yeah, all the information you can find everywhere. Oh, hello. Don't want to do that. It's really, really simple. And again, you got the project page telling you roughly how many projects are already. 153. It's growing all the time. It's growing all the time. But yeah, as I say, I prefer the other website. This one's a bit better for like news and events and stuff like that all the information of each individual project. Pretty cool. So get your information for the correct sources. Don't just like waffle it in and kind of figure it out yourself. If you like a project, the beautiful thing with this as well, and I've, I've always said this, any project you go on to, right, just click on it. It'll tell you what it is, if it's a bridge, if it's a DeFi, and it'll tell you exactly. This was one of the auction winners for, I think it was Kasama. And all the information's here. It'll tell you exactly what they're doing and who's doing what and videos and developer activity. It's pretty simple, and then you can fall down the rabbit hole yourself. Anyways, I'm a big fan. I do like it, as you know. So I hope it explains a little bit in more detail what it actually physically is instead of just kind of waffling over it and kind of people giving you wrong information. It is not a layer one blockchain. It is much more than that, and you will soon learn when the network effect takes hold. Enjoy. Yeah.